And we are back with a brand new episode that we have a brand new thing to talk to you guys about. This is what we sound like. Okay. Isn't that cool? Yeah, that's amazing. Check out our new mics. What does my voice sound like? Does it sound awesome in there? Oh my gosh. Nice, this is right? sick. I know. I only have one pair of headphones. If you want, you can wear them the whole time. Just take one ear off or keep them on. No, I'm keeping these on. Do I mean, it, guys, it's amazing. Amazing, right? Okay, so we... As you saw last episode, we did the Super Mario Giant new setup. Now, that was a big episode. Like, that that probably did something really big to our channel. I just think it was so fun because we haven't done anything like that. And we've been playing Mario... A uh, uh, couple of years what's now. What's it called, though? Mario... Mario Wonder. Wonder. I was like, Mario Wisdom? Is it called Mario Wisdom? <laughs> That's definitely not what it's called. I just also wanted to say... Um, Another thing that's coming out, remember um, the new Super Mario RPG? You can sit back. You don't have to have it that close to your face. No, These I like it. I like it this close. All right. Um, but, rem but Mario Wonder was a big ad, I think, to the Super Mario Nintendo ad. Like, I think it's the greatest addition of any game that they've ever had. I think it incorporates the absolute best parts of all of the Mario games. My favorite like techniques and jumping and running and it's also very like the original. It's just a two-dimensional game, but they add things. You can go to the background, the third dimension, you can get the elephant power. So You many can great go things. to the front of it. Yeah. I also want to say now you keep feeling at this jump 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 level. Oh my gosh. Guys, if you are listening um Hit the like and subscribe and show us the actual way to beat this level yeah, that's, so we can do this way quicker. That's a really good point. If you want to talk to the people, look right at those three little lenses right there. Oh, my gosh, the lights are off again. Come on. What's wrong with me? <laughs> my What's dad thinks lights me? are so important, but Listen, they're not. There are a lot of people in Hollywood that would be super <laughs> mad at me because I didn't properly light this podcast. So let's get some lights on it. Huh? There we go. All right, sorry, I people. Just, I also just wanted to say, like, if you guys subscribe and you show us, like, the actual way to do this level, yeah. we will sh we will uh, do another podcast just on that level, like, doing it Yes. for you. Yes, absolutely. Just, we'll do a play-along. I can do it. You can do it. Like, a straight 20 minutes just as failing at that jump-jump oh level. Gosh, it's, I've failed at it how many times so far? I'm guessing around 50. What is it, a four-star? It's a four-star difficulty, all right? It you feels happy? like it's a 50 star difficulty. L listen, listen. The final level, it, the the stars, you what do you think the limit of stars is? The limit of stars? What do you mean? Like the limit of difficulty. Like how many stars do you think it is like the most? Oh, I thought it was 4. You're wrong. What? Because the final level and so the levels we're going to be going into. Oh, another thing. We're huh. going into fungi mines. Fungi mines? What's that mean? Well, it's a it's probably where the toads mine. Remember? So how far have you gone? Like how how far has the game? We're we're four levels in. Four levels in, and there are there eight levels like the traditional game? I don't know. I'm guessing there's around six or something. There's got to be eight. There's always eight. Oh, there's seven. There, no, there's seven. There's seven. There's seven, and then Koopa Land is probably eight. No, there is just seven. I bet there's a hidden land. That we don't know about. Oh, there is hidden land. Skyland. Skyland. There's eight lands, just like the first game. Which is awesome. And just another reason why we love the Mario, Super Mario Brothers franchise so much is because they don't let go of the old stuff that we love. They add new stuff. They try new stuff. If the new stuff doesn't work, they take it out. They keep the stuff that does work. And they bring back the things that we've loved from these titles for so long. It's amazing. I talked about this a long time ago, but... When I was your age, I started playing on the Super, Ni the NES, the Nintendo Entertainment System, and now you're playing on Nintendo Switch. And by the way, Nintendo Switch, I know there's a second Nintendo Switch version in development about to come out. Send it to us, and we'll play it. We're the Mario Brothers, and plummets a game. We're not like the others who get all the fame. When your sick is in trouble, you can call us on the double. We're faster than the others. You'll be hooked on the brothers. Ooh, ooh. <laughs> That's amazing. We should end the podcast right on that, but we've only done like five minutes, so we got to just talk a little bit more. Okay, so that was incredible. Good job. Thanks. W way to perform your hip your hip hop Mario commercial <laughs> without even preparing. I love it so much. 
<laughs> um, All right, hold on. I want to ask you some real stuff, not about okay. Mario, okay? I'm going okay, to okay, give you a little okay, interview. Okay, okay. Are you prepared? I yeah. want you to answer yeah, answer honestly. Okay. Um, how are you doing? <laughs> Out of all the things you could have asked me, no, it's but just, that. But just really, sometimes in life, people mm -hmm. forget to just say, hey, man, how are you? And so I'm just asking, how are you? I think you're pretty good, but how are you? How, what's, how's your life doing? I, I feel like it's pretty great. Um, I mean, what was that? So that's your new Shore microphone. <laughs> Shout out to Shore. We're looking for sponsors. No, I just did this. All right, don't do that. You're going to break our beautiful new microphone. <laughs> how you doing, man? How you doing? I, I mean, I feel, I, I feel honestly very great. I mean. Your life is good. You're happy. You feel like you're, there's not too much pressure on you to be the awesome guy that you are. You feel like you're living the way you want to live. As, at eight years old, I'm, I want to I mean, know about this I stuff. I mean, sometimes I get the pressure of doing the chores I'm supposed to do, but then I think about myself and I, and I go, well, this isn't pressure. This is me topping each thing on top of each other, and then it feels like pressure because it's all so hard to do it all at once. But you know a good way to get past that? All you have to do is start doing one thing and don't think, oh, I have to do all these different things. I have to pick up my toys or clean my room. Just start with one thing and say, hey, I'm going to work on this one thing, and when I get that one thing finished, then I'll move on to the next thing. That's how you move forward in life without getting overwhelmed. You know how many things I have to do on a daily basis. I get overwhelmed in the morning and I go, hey, let's start with a workout. I get my workout in, check that off the list, and one thing at a time. Other than feeling overwhelmed with your chores, mm -hmm. how's your soccer experience been? I mean, I feel, really feel good. Um, what is that? Coach Adams. Yeah, that's Coach Adams. We're actually using shout Coach. Out, shout out to Soccer Routes. Um, it's a beautiful place to. Soccer Roots. Soccer Roots. It's a beautiful place to raise your child if they really want to do um, soccer. How about your friends there? You've made a lot of interesting new friends there. I have tons of friends. What do you learn about soccer on that field? Have you learned any skills? I, I mean, all the skills, like, I keep them in my head, but it's not like... I, I remember them, and I never use them because I know I'm already good enough with what I have. And then I think for a minute, well, some of these tricks might be good enough to add to my daily schedule. Here's another thing I'm going to share with you. You know what? Once upon a time, I thought, man, this is as good as I'll get at this thing. And then I realized, no, you're never going to be perfect at anything. That you have to just, what do we say? Practice makes progress. Pro practice makes, yeah, progress. Or better, that's fine. Practice makes better. <laughs> but you, you can't be the best at anything because every day you have the ability to learn something more about that and grow yourself. So you keep learning amazing things with your Legos, on your Mario games, in school. Even though you think you know a lot, all of a sudden, you're able to learn some more, add it to your repertoire of things you you learn, and that's how soccer is. You might be good at running, you might be good at kicking goals, but you can get better at dribbling. We can get better at this and that. You know, there's lots of skills we can get better at. So, I think it's important that we stay wide open to learning the things that we don't know, and never yeah. believe that you know everything because you never will. And when you stop learning, you start dying. Remember that. When your brain stops getting new, fun information in it, your brain's like sad. It's not having it anymore, you know? So keep stay open to your soccer. You are a good soccer player, but <laughs> yeah. your skill set is going to be amped up by soccer roots and all that they have to offer. Coach Brian and our team of guys we love out there. So I'm happy to hear you're enjoying it. Yeah, another thing I just want to say. Christmas is right around the corner. Let's talk about Christmas. Another because... thing I just want to say. You might, you might be angry about this. Mom, I know you're going to see this episode. You're probably going to say no. Dad's going to be like, I don't care. Rules are breaking. Um, Emma? Something that I really, I'm really wanting for Santa is an axolotl. A real one? Yes. I don't know if Santa deals with real live axolotls. I don't even know if that's a possibility. Oh, I, come I, on. I, I come mean, on, just say yes. I can't say anything. Just say yes! That is a question for Santa that you write the letter and explain exactly how you feel, and I think maybe he'll be open to it. But I, just, I, 
I can't make that. I, M- Mom would kill me if I came home with an axolotl. Hey, Ma, here's an axolotl. What? Get out. I, I, I love axolotls for so many reasons. It's because, like, they're almost extinct for one reason. There's only about th- 10,000 of them left. Do you know where they're native to? Where do axolotls come from? Um, Mexico. Mexico, you think? Me- I don't know. No, they're from Mexico lakes. You can catch one of them easily in a Mexico lake. Oh, all right. That sounds interesting. What about anywhere else? Is that like the main spot they come from? That, that's where the yeah. Mexico lakes. Um, okay. The, but axolotls, um, even though they have that smile on their face, they're known for being another one of the most aggressive creatures. Why do you want one of those for Christmas, though? Because they're adorable. You just said it's one of the most aggressive creatures. Well, not not when when they're getting fed. Like when you when you when you get the tweezers and you put the piece of what are they like to eat? Um, they like to eat night crawlers. Night crawlers? What do you mean? It's like, a it's a type of sea worm. I got you. I got you. I, got you, you. I was like, night crawler sounds like some creepy movie, some zombie crawling in the night. You, you get you get your teasers. You bring the sea worm into it, but it's not. They're not aggressive for humans. They just go and get they get their food very fast. That's why. All right. So Santa, you're gonna get an axolotl letter. It's coming from my and son. Please be open to it. And other... if you're not open to it, send us a stuffed axolotl. Maybe I don't know. And Santa, like, I don't know. Do like... we think Santa watches the podcast? Let, why are we talking to Santa? If Santa has some magical eighty-five inch TV, <laughs> Santa, if you're watching. <laughs> I don't know if Santa watches YouTube, but everybody else seems to watch YouTube. So maybe Santa does. I don't know. I don't know. Santa, if you have a magical TV portal that just watches like us right now, it could be one of these weird light bulbs that just staring at us with that aggressive. It could be that. You never if know. you can just see us right now, I just wanted to say like I'm having some pretty crazy things on my list. Number one, I'm wearing a 3DS. Number two... What's a 3DS? The, old, the Nintendo thing? Yes. Why do you want that? That's old. That's not Joking, new. Joking, I wasn't wanting that. Okay. I was wanting the 3DS because Luigi's Mansion 1 is on the 3DS. But this 2024 summer, it will be released, Luigi's Mansion Uno, onto the Nintendo Switch. Really? Off of Game Block... Off of 3DS, off of Window Plane, off of the computer. Really? Now on to Nintendo Switch. Peace out. What's cool about that is you're excited to play an old game. Yeah, I've always... Because we've beaten Luigi's Mansion 3 like probably 300 times at this point. Yeah, I mean, now that I know everything about Luigi's Mansion, it's just like, it's boring. I need something new. I get bring. it. Where's Luigi's Mansion 4? That's what we're hoping for. Listen, and Mario look, Odyssey. There. Oh, oh, RP, RPG. Let's talk about RPG. RP, Super Mario RPG. Comes Could out be... November 17th. Remember, it's right around the corner. November 17th. So today's oh like gosh. November 6th. That's the, that's the day before we leave. To Shh, Oregon. Don't tell everybody we're leaving. What? Don't tell everybody we're leaving. They're not supposed to know we're not going to be. We're leaving! <laughs> December 17th, we're leaving. October 17th. Yeah. All right, so anyway. Everyone can know. Okay. Mario RPG is this f- first person kind of Mario game, I mm-hmm. guess. I've never played any of the previous titles, but this now, one looks incredible. Mario RPG was one of the old video games. Like, we're talking like Dark Bowser. Like, Dark Bowser was back with RPG. Back from Dad's Dad's Day? Before. Holy cow. RPG was a very old Super Mario game, and it wasn't really that good back then. Hmm. It, it was dig- digital. It was odd. Like, the the bosses were weird and creepy. Like, yeah. It didn't make sense. But now that they've released a new Super Mario RPG, mm-hmm. we finally have a chance to see Dark Bowser in a realistic form. Oh, really? He's from RPG? 
Yes. Oh. The blue one with the black glasses. The one you just drew the picture of. This is what also I think. I think some of your artwork's so amazing, you should autograph it and put it up for auction for some of our watchers, maybe. Guys, if you um heard, if you if anyone's watching this episode, please subscribe. And if you have, will you send us the final boss battle from RPG of Dark Bowser? Ooh, that would be fun. Or send us a link. Um somehow some way you mm-hmm. could send uh oh. matt cohen for real on a twi- on x and instagram you can reach out to bro, us bro 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 um there is a release date for our luigi's mansion 4 a real release date or like a fan made wannabe youtuber there's a real release date all right you better be sure tell the people when it is october 24th 2024? 2024. It's sometime in October. I don't know. I could. It could be October 21st, October 31st, or it could be October 1st. I am awaiting that day because we love Luigi's Mansion. And here's another thing. Remember the movie, Super Mario Bros. movie that just came out? The guy who did Luigi's voice? Charlie Day? You interviewed him. Charlie Day. Should, there should be a Luigi's Mansion spinoff. Mr. Miyamoto, Mr. Takayashi, do us a favor and green light, green light a Luigi's Mansion spinoff with Charlie Day. It's going to be the most, the best horror comedy made in the last, I don't know how long. There's a lot of good horror comedies, but this one will be fantastic. You know, like yesterday when I was napping, I was getting all these ideas for a realistic Luigi's Mansion movie. And I started like feeling like it was the Charlie Day version of Luigi. Walking out of the hotel from Luigi's Mansion 3 that's now fixed. And there's this bus coming. And inside that bus is a Luigi's Mansion 1, the first boss. Remember, he had he has red hair and a mustache. That's and such he, a cool idea. And he's laying on the chair with a book. And he's and he's in and he's in the bus looking at looking at his phone and Lui and Luigi sees the ghost and then the ghost immediately goes and s- and then I have a cool idea for Luigi's Mansion then the, too. And then the whole hotel will be fixed. Remember, in the end, we fix it. The whole hotel gets struck with lightning. Down from the sky comes again one of the most annoying people on planet Earth, King Boo. Ugh, he's a pain. But then, not only does the hotel come struck with lightning, the hotel sinks about two hundred fifty thousand feet under the ground. Whoa. And then there's this mo- there's this sub train underground, and it pulls Luigi onto it. Whoa. This was a dream? And, no, I'm making this up oh, from the Oh, go dream. ahead. Keep going. I love and it. And then the train is now haunted. You are timed through the whole thing. You have two weeks to complete the game. If you don't complete it in that amount of time... You have to play nonstop if that's the case. Well, if you don't complete it in that amount of time... You die, and you have to starve the game. And how about this? How about if we added in each bad guy boss you battle mm-hmm. is from an old Luigi's Mansion. So the graphics of the bad guy can be like older looking on level one, slightly newer on level two. And as you get to the top floor, you get to more modern graphics and new versions of King Boo the Ghost. But the other times, you're battling old bad guys from the other Luigi's mansions, Wait, but in the new game. Remember how, like, in Super Mario Odyssey, you, ba- you battle Bowser twice? Yes. Imagine if you get to battle King Boo three times. The first time, he's not that hard. He only shoots one bomb, and he stays as one. The second time, he splits into two, and he shoots five bombs. Whoa. Third time, he splits into five. A lot like, of bombs. It would be for the new version, though. Sure, Oh. I like it. Send a new shout out to the brand new Steven Universe game, Steven Universe Unleashed the Light. Is it brand new or is it just brand new to us? Because we just no, found no, out. No, about... no, 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 no. It's brand new. Are you sure? Yes. Okay. So they had Steven Universe Attack the Light, Steven Universe Save the Light, and then Steven Universe Unleash the Light. Steven Universe Attack the Light was the first one. Steven Universe Unleashed Live is a second. Can I ask you some stuff about Steven Universe? Okay. And then we'll be done. I don't want this podcast to go too long because I want to make sure everything's recording properly. Okay, but just bef- go ask ahead. me so many questions. All right. Leave that alone. Stop touching it because it's going to make sound. So 
what is it about Steven Universe that you've been attracted to so fast and so kind of extreme? Like you've really loved this show. What do you like about the show? What is it that makes you feel so good and want to continue to watch it? Well, number one thing, my cousin, Alina, she's six years old. She introduced me to this. Hmm. And Bobo and Mimi, my aunt and uncle, were both very into it. So I was like, well, Alina was kept trying to pressure me into it. Yeah. And I finally said no. And then they left without mm -hmm. me knowing anything about it. Wow. And then mom said, just give the first episode a try. You didn't want to give it a try, though. I didn't. And what do we know about not giving things a but, try? But it's because, listen, huh. it's also Alina's fault. Why? She starred me in the middle of the final season. So okay. So how am I supposed to know what's going on? Understood. Yeah, that makes it that makes it a little but, l hard to but grasp I also onto. But I also thought, like, th this isn't for me. This isn't, this isn't a show that's for my age. And then I turn on the first episode. And I was immediately pulled to it. It's also what like, pulled you though? What was it? Was it the characters? Was it the music? It was, the, was it, it the visual appeal? It was the, it was the people, the the gems. Like I've always been a rock person, and ever since my um, my nana has brought me into this. Yeah, she's an ultimate rock collector. Yes, and when I was, I I was like, this this has to be it. And, and now you've seen every episode you've done with everything? There's still one more season coming out in 2024, season six. What about a movie? Is there a movie there? You said there was a movie, yeah, right? there's a movie. Is, you, don't, you like the movie? Is it as good as everything else? Or you like the series better? I kind of like the series better. Like, the movie's okay, but, like, they could explain more. What if we made a live-action movie of Steven Universe? What character would you want to play? I mean, I've been practicing the voices. I think I could do Steven when he would be 16. Oh, yeah? To tell the truth, yeah. That would be f awesome. I'd love to do it. Maybe we'll film a little something and put it up for people to see how you play Steven. Um, other than the characters, so you relate to the characters. People that don't know Steven Universe is about basically gems, rocks, like like minerals, and they, they come together and they... Uh, fuse. They fuse and yeah, they let, can become other me, characters. Give just, them the quick rundown of what me, the show is. Let me have a song for you and also a Go good ahead. story. Go for it. Ahem. Take your time. <clears throat> Go for it. Mom was a diamond who invaded Earth, saw its beauty and its worth. Mom made an army and she fought herself. Did that even em end up mattering when she faked her own shattering? Mom lived in hiding by the name of Rose with the friends she made and the form she chose. Now all that's left of her exists in me and I think that we can all agree that is a little bit upsetting. That's amazing. So that's kind of the story. So That's kind of the story, but that's also the song from the show. Mm -hmm. Wow, you're just really good at memorizing stuff. Now, like, the first thing is, like, so there's, it's four very long stories. Maybe, like, each and every episode. So who do you want me to start with? Pearl, Amethyst, I want to just give them the quick rundown. I don't want to go over the whole story. I want to just be okay. quick. They, they're, it's called a spoiler alert when you mm -hmm. tell people too much about a show so the best thing for us to do is to tell them the most exciting parts SP so they get excited guys excited. spa what's that it's what you just said spa spa alert S spoiler alert spoiler SPA. alert spa don't give away no spas <laughs> don't give away no spas okay, so, um so you love steven so universe other than the gems what is it about the show that's so cool? I know, obviously, you know that you like the music because the music's it's amazing. It's just like they, they just did such a good job, and you know this show has been out for a couple of years now, like ten yeah. or twenty years. No, really, I feel like it's brand new. No, it's very old. Wow. The show goes back to like when you were born. Whoa, hundred years um, ago. <laughs> so I'll just give you a rundown of the four gems. So, um. There, are f there were four diamonds: blue, yellow, pink, and white. White was the leader. Pink was the smallest, and then blue and yellow were the sidekicks. This is for Garnet. Blue Diamond had a ruby and sapphire in her program. Um, the rubies would protect the sapphire. 
um, until the day came that a uh, that someone tried to shatter Sapphire when Ruby rushed in to the Sapphire to try and save her. Then they fused into Garnet. That's why in one of the near nearest episodes, Blue Diamond says, the ruby and sapphire that disrupted my court. That's right. That's right. I remember that part. And then Pink Diamond um, had a pearl, pink pearl, and she came down to Earth because she wanted to see what, what Earth was like. She hmm. gave it a shot. Pink Diamond changed her form into Rose Quartz, and the Rose Quartz Got set it. Pearl free. Got it. And then Rose Quartz found Greg, their uh, Steven Stag dad, and Rose fell in love with Greg. And then Rose gave up her form into Steven. So now Pearl still looks after Steven. Got it. And then Amethyst. She was from the kindergarten. It's hmm. not what you think. The kindergarten is something entirely different. It's yeah. a it's a nightmare place. Now, amethysts, there are many other amethysts. They burst out of the wall, and they're supposed to come out big and strong and tall. Hmm. But amethyst came out wrong for some reason. We still can't figure that out. She came out wow. she came out small and and she wasn't strong. That's when Rose and Pearl brought her upon the team. And that's pretty much your lineup of the four gems. Listen, you got to check it out. We're going to hop off. We're going to keep this nice and short today. We're back in this. We're doing it. It feels good. You're happy with the new sound. We're going to make this podcast bigger, better, and greater and more entertaining for you guys. We appreciate you hopping on here. If you can do us the kindness of subscribing, you'll allow us to keep making the show and kind of help things out. Um, Anyways, that's MC on the mic. We're over and out. We love you, people. Peace. Don't forget to like and subscribe.